What's up guys, JB, JB's Toy Trunk. Back home in Virginia Beach for spring break. Someone said that there's a biggest toy store on the East Coast right here in Virginia Beach called Toy Meister. Let's go see what they got. go this is how your display should look a scene set up you got your troopers you got r2 running away you got the emperor you got darth running the table man this is crazy all right we got the big hulk big, big hulking han solo there you go and c3po back there these dioramas are just tremendous oh these man Look at that set up. Now I think they can help you with diorama ideas or setups. So we're gonna have to ask the guys and see if they can help us out with this. Cause this looks tremendous for any, any, any display. Got the clones going on. Higher end collectibles up here. Wow, we got the Jin and Ray. It's a All right guys, again, hanging out at Toy Meister up here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And I told you guys, I'm gonna try to slow it down a little bit. Um, Again, this video and the last video hopefully will do it some sort of justice. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I haven't seen these in a while. You know, a little Captain Phasma. But like I was saying, it's just one of those you have to just come up here and see for yourself. I mean, we could be here for all, for, you know, forever. Ooh. How many of you guys have this? Battle damage Darth Vader. And again, guys, me coming back into the program, I, or back into the game, I, I, I don't remember these, you know? Got your black series and here are your numbers right here. I can't pull all of them out, but it's a good group of them right there. Get your basic figures, those are always fine to have. Look at that chewy. So you got your your top in there. You got a you got Akbar. Oh, there's a Leia. Box is not the best, but look at the princess. You guys will let me know. Let's see what else I got. You got the Turn of the Jedi Falcon and the Empire Falcon. You got an Imperial shuttle down there. Got some pops hanging out. Geonosis Battle Center. Bunch of Lucy's. So, Mr. Sintastic, is this okay? Are we okay still? Are you still watching? You still hanging in there? Someone check on them. All right, guys, we're gonna continue to hang out here.
So I didn't see this earlier because there's just so much to look at. Come on, man. That might have to. Nine years ago, this started in maybe a 100 foot square space. And it's grown to over 15,000 square foot, over a million different items that we carry on hand. Um, the best thing about working here is you're not gonna get a big box package stuff. You're gonna get these, everything that you will see is from someone's collection. Right. And it's, whether it's packaged, used, but I'm gonna be 43 here in about uh, 10 days. <laughs> there you go. And at least once a week I see something from my childhood that I thought was gone. You know, my little plush gizmo that I got, um, I just started recollecting my Secret Wars and Superpowers figures. And we're such a family here, my coworker actually bought me my Superpowers Superman because I'd been eyeing it for months since I've been here, but I didn't pull the trigger. Um, absolutely beautiful piece, but the thing that was most touching to me and the reason that we do this and the toy master himself will tell you, is I had a kid, a child come in here and he was looking uh, for his, his little small transformer that he had and he could have been older than eight, so it wasn't an old one. We found it and we were only asking five, six dollars. And the beautiful thing that we have the liberty of here is I pulled the sticker off and I said, buddy, here you go. He ran up and gave me a hug, didn't know me from Adam. Wow. Gave me a hug and I said, yup, this is what I've meant to do. I did 20 years in the army serving my country and I shopped here and then they we seen the help wanted and my wife goes you love yeah I could spend hours up here shopping and she goes 
why didn't you apply? Sure. And I said, okay, so I did. Funniest story is uh, with my energy that I normally carry, uh, my boss goes, after you interviewed, I didn't know if I'd love working with you or hate working with you. And he goes, it's been one of the best decisions I've made because he's given me the liberty to turn this amazing toy store into the, I already think it's the best, but the wow factor that we get from the people that come in here once a week, the people that come here on vacation. I mean, all you see is the wide eyes. The If you look up, there's, there's a, a Imperial Starships hanging from the ceiling. If you look down, there's plushies that are sitting down at your feet. It's ceiling to floor joy. And that's what it is. I walk through and, and me and me and my coworkers will tell you, we just look at things that come in and we just smile because we're like, yep, had that, whether it's in package, out of package, it doesn't matter because that's what we want to convey every step of the way is just joy, joy, joy. Take it home, smile. There you go. Now tell me, what's that one item that is still in the store and not home with you right now? Definitely, <laughs> oh, and, and it's only because I know we'll see it in beautiful condition, but it's the it's the silver hawk. Okay, great. Yep, we have four of, or we have three of them. Right. But they're a little dingy on the leg and on the head. And when I first started here nine months ago, I said, man, I'm never gonna see a silver hawk. I'm never gonna see my lion. I'm never gonna. And now we get them. So I've learned to have that patience to say that beautiful one's gonna come in because that Superman that I got. Yeah. Um. It looks like he got taken out of the package and not even right. touched. The cape is beautiful. Where I didn't pull the trigger and I kill myself is that 1985. And this is for all the viewers. Here we go. I, we, if you think not, that there's a meme <laughs> where the guy's drinking a cup of coffee and he says, um, whatever's <laughs> the best, uh, tell me I'm different. 1985 was the best year for toys. Tell me I'm wrong. Come down here, tell me I'm wrong. There we go, it's a challenge. But we had that 1985 Superpowers Batman and he sat here for months and I said, one day I'm gonna get him. Well, like two weeks ago, my wife gave me the blessing to go ahead and bring him home. Beautiful color, $65, low asking price. That weekend he was gone, somebody else snagged him up on me. So again, I'm waiting for him to come back, but that Silver Hawk, that's my go. jam. Those are my jams. I appreciate it, man. Thank you of so course. much for your time. I love it, I love it. All right. Okay guys, not just toys in Toy Meister, comic books. I know a lot of you toy hunters, toy collectors, big into comic books. So if you ever make it out to Virginia Beach, obviously you're gonna hit up this store because of what you're seeing. But there's a lot of good comic books to see here. Wrapping it around, got some Hot Wheels. This section over here, a lot of the die cast. Whoa, first time seeing that. I see the brothers all the time, but not the shredder and foot soldier. It's kind of tight in here, guys, but wall of pops. Still have some in the wrap. Good to see. Some more pops, some more displays. Sodas. And I think last time we were here, we had some NECA in a, in a wrap. We're gonna ask him about that. Looks like you got your whole alien wave. So if you guys are looking for that, hit up Toy Meister. Still wanna get that for some reason. Here's your Halloween too, just like what we're seeing in our Target, but they've had it here for a while. Oh, what? All right, guys, I have to, for our gem collectors out there. <laughs> Bringing it back. Gotta unmask. Right there. Ooh, never seen these guys. First time. Kind of hard 
you see the glass, but you got your Halloween. I told myself I wasn't gonna get this one. Maybe one day. Look at that, Moon Knight. So I kind of, kind of told you guys I want to focus a little bit more on this side of the house. Do a little bit more slow pan, especially for you uh, Indiana Jones guys. Got the new Indiana Jones coming out, but if you want to go back to the smaller scale. Oh, look at that guy. Look at this, guys. Do you know? No. Do you know what those are? I know. Oh, Rambo. What a bow. Rambo. Rambo. Oh, 18? 18. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, so here we go. We were talking about mask earlier. This is what I'm talking about. Let's get this back. Resurged, three and three quarter scale. Vehicles and everything.
Got the new Silverhawks, or you could go vintage Silverhawks. A stride or just come over here and get a real stride or All right, guys, I promised you I would do a little bit more on the footage of this Eternia. Obviously, with it being dated, the box looks a little rough, but it's got wrap all over it to, I guess, keep it together. And to my knowledge, it is complete. So, right there in front of me. See what I'm saying? Everything is just right here in front of you. If you blink, you might miss it. Yeah, the 112, 112 scale, right? Uh, for the six inch figures, I make it you know, I put a uh, hardwood on the bottom so it doesn't warp. Okay, this one is four foot long by 18 inches deep, which is huge for most dioramas. Most guys on the internet, you'll see they'll make just a a 12 inch one by 12 inch one, you know, sort of thing. Kind of so, like for a detail. Yeah, but I wanted to make a whole city and they wanted to run it for the, the whole gamut. So um, everything's magnetized, so all, all these pull off, you know, easy, easy to store. Okay. And then, uh, That's amazing. And I guess for if you're doing any type of photography, if you want to change up the oh, scenery. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can move these around, you know, they, these will come out, you know, you can do whatever you want. That's amazing. You can put a light underneath the uh, manhole cover, you don't have a light come up through or whatever. Very Fence, cool. Fence is removable. You know, this, whole piece will come off you know you could just photograph that if you wanted i don't do much on the inside but you know just in case you can see through the window you know what i mean i do a little, little bit of flooring sure uh, yeah it's all foam or uh 
you know, straw or wood. You know, this is just kind of decorative wood from Lowe's or Home Depot. You know, kind of stuff. It looks amazing, man. And I uh, dirty it up, you know, make it look like street. Get it that weathering. Yeah, yeah. And you, you do a lot of the dioramas here at Toy Monster? I do all the dioramas. All of them? Okay. <laughs> Toy Monster wanted something that was going to run the whole top of the cabinet. So yeah. this section here, again, these are all four foot long for right. the most part, 18 inches deep. This was, uh, he wanted something like a spaceship of some sort. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, floor. It's kind of hard to get up in there, but. Uh, you can no, see we could see it just fine. And, and these doors, you know, these are all pop lines that come out the doors and everything. Most of it's made from. Uh, those are just plastic containers and stuff that I found from stores and bottle caps and things like that and painted it. And Yeah, last time I was in here, I got kind of nervous because I did, I was just in shock and awe of all the awesome, <laughs> just the scenes oh, and the no, dioramas. And, uh, you got to spend hours in here. Yeah. So this section here, you wanted some type of jungle scene, so I did that. And right. Got, got most of the stuff from the dollar store. Or, sure. Uh, you know, just uh, plastic plants, took them apart, you know, weathered them, made them look good. That was just an old skeleton from uh, a Halloween decoration I cut apart and all this stuff. <laughs> you could do a lot with that scene right there. You could yeah. do Indiana oh, yeah. Jones. You can do. Yeah, yeah. And this, this, go this is all right. magnetized. You know, that all come off. Oh, okay. All those pieces are magnetized. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Oh, okay. So talk about this one right here, because so this is another city scene right here. So right. It's another four foot wall. Four foot. Um, he wanted a little tattoo parlor back in the back. I made a scaffolding for a fire escape and then a little mini mall here, and just went with a kind of New York City. Uh, you know, scene kind, sure. of, kind of thing. And then this one is more, he wanted more of a uh, battle damage kind of stuff. Sure. So I made the house coming apart. Um, again, the chain link fence, which can come off if you wanted to open that up. You know. This is just metal from uh, Home Depot, man. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a leaf guard for uh, to keep the leaves out of your rain spot. All <laughs> so right. uh, made it look uh, chain link fence, put some uh, barbed wire on the top, and uh, yeah, you can stick that anywhere you wanted. You know. Now, yeah, this this scene was the one that I wanted to sit on a lot when I was last time I was here, just because, oh, okay. you know, when there's you, a lot going on, you know, with Mark, <laughs> no, I don't put the figures on, you know. Uh, the, okay, I was going to ask my buddy here. He right. does all the figures. I just make the dioramas, and he does all the figures. So. Right. You know, I, I bring it in. I was like, here's another one. And he, he puts it all up here. So. So working with these dioramas, working with these awesome, awesome, awesome toys and collectibles. Yeah. What's your number one? What's your line? It's my line. Yeah, like, is there I'm a, a GI Joe, Joe guy? Okay. <laughs> Let me see. I'm a G.I. Joe guy. <laughs> I, don't even, right. I don't even do Marvel or DC. So, <laughs> that's a, so I'm a collector from the old 12 inch G.I. Joe's, and that's how I got started. Interesting. Like, toys. I was in third grade when Star Wars came out, you know, so then I got into the little figures. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a the traditional, you know, early, late 70s, early 80s kind of guy. Yeah. So, He's really old. I was in college with <laughs> Teenage Mutant Turtles Turtles and all that stuff came out. So hey, I, man, I, I was, never really collected that kind of I was stuff, already so. deployed on my first, yeah. you know, on the, when <laughs> the 90s stuff started happening. So, yeah, I hear you. Well, good, man. And so then, the city scene continues. Oh, oh my God. There, and, and, you know, like I say on my channel, and there's more. Yeah. And yep, there's yep. more. So this was more of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. He wanted something underground. Underground so sewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secret of the Ooze type used, stuff. Uh, I did the green resin in here. Right. Uh, that. And these were made to be, if you can see that, that's only, I think, two foot long. Okay. So it's two foot, two foot, two foot. And you could actually stack those on top of each other and make it look like oh. levels. That's how we originally made it. Gotcha. But here we just took them apart and laid sure. them this way. But they're all magnetized. So if you wanted to put them together, you know, and this one, I just did a rusted fence. You can see climbing through. You can see the, the tunnels for the turtles, uh, whatever. This would be the top city scene here. This is just a dog toy, <laughs> but it fit in good, so I just used it. Same, it. same with some, some of the barrels, you know, that's just uh, stuff you get at the dollar store. Full transparency, guys. Got it at the dog store. Nothing, <laughs> nothing to hide, no secrets. That's what these it's all about. These ones We're here. having fun. There you go. This I just made. You know, these are just little, I call them scene setters. You know, you can move them right. anywhere. It's not attached. We kind of went with a kryptonite or something like yeah, that you yeah know, whatever you want to call it uh, cr crystals when you think back to when we were kids we would kind of do that anyway oh, yeah, something yeah. in the street something sure. something in the woods yeah, yeah, all, make all, your own these scene. Are, all these are movable and you can move around but it adds that little effect that things are might be a little harder to see without the light in there but uh you can see they're just these were just uh i think these were 12 inches by 12 inches that fit inside this kind of like the detail type setup yeah just a little weathering little dry brushing on those little uh, lava scene like a you know, oh yeah, and then that's that's a jungle scene down there. All right, guys, for you Jurassic Park and Dino peeps, let's see what we got going on down here. This is, a, this is the latest one I did. It's kind of a 
castle, medieval, medieval castle with sure. uh, some dragons. I made a statue of a, uh, <laughs> a unicorn with a dragon stepping on it. <laughs> so, uh, Cause that's what happened back in the yeah, medieval yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have uh, so Coke or Pepsi back then or knives or forks. I made the, uh, the Brian tar pits, well, of course, you know, I gotta, gotta do that. This is the Jurassic area. Right there. Right there. Now, I mean, I, I know with art, you know, there's really no time limit on it, but I mean, you know, uh, the four foot section that we saw earlier, how, how much, you know, time are you putting into that? The buildings obviously are a lot more time. I mean, you got, you got to cut all the bricks, you got to cut all the windows, you got to do all the flexi gas. With something like this, right? I can make this in like two or three days usually. Okay. If it's a good day outside and I can, uh, you know, I can get the paint to dry pretty quick in the sun. Where I got my start, you know, I was collecting G.I. Joe's. Uh, I had two hand-me-downs for my brothers. These are the vintage G.I. Joe's from 1964 to 1976. You know, that's when G.I. Joe's were the big deal, you know? Right. And then 76, they stopped making them. And then uh, it wasn't until 1991, until Desert Storm, Desert Shield, they came back with the 12 inch one. Right. Okay. So that's everything up here that you see is from 1991 and up. Okay. Uh, also, you got a lot of different other name brands that came out, actually, in the 21st century, all over. Uh, you know, so Soldiers of the World, there's a whole bunch of different companies out there, but at one time it was just. Hasbro GI Joe, you know that was the name. Right. Do you get any? Uh, I mean, collectors our age and older come here and kind of just not so much lose it and or just <laughs> take a step back. Honestly, you know, because honestly, it's funny when you see the guy that comes in here for the first time and they're just like wide-eyed, like walked in Toys R Us for the first time as a little kid. You know, like I had that. I had that. <laughs> you know, I hear that every day. I had that toy. My mom gave it away to garage sale or something. That's the biggest thing I get. Kind of like my first time yeah, when I got I here. Yeah, my head, yep. <laughs> mom too. You know, mom yeah. too. So. Um, we have quite a bit of collectors in our community that you know they collect large vehicles, and um, you know I've, I've never seen really airplanes like that. We usually see tanks. Yeah, and those are three, 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 three and three quarter figure okay. scales um, up here too. You know, you got some still in the box. Right. Obviously, these are the old toy soldiers that I grew up with, you know, the old plastic toy soldiers that kids just don't play with anymore. But, right. You know, that's the stuff I have growing up, the old Mark's play sets. Yeah. Um, here's a here's a one six scale tank down there. Okay. So and the big, and the this big is what we're talking about right here. Yeah. I mean, those are the big ones. So we, you know, and you said, you know, 12 inch scale. Now, yeah, yeah. If, do you collect any of the newer figures? Um, as far as three and three quarter? The, I don't collect three and three quarter. Or classified? I only collect 12 inch. So. Wow. But I have every 12-inch figure that G.I. Joe made, G.I. Joe name brand. Repeat that again. <laughs> I have almost every 12-inch figure. Yeah, I have over, I have over 500 G.I. Joe's. <laughs> so you, feel free to come to my garage and do a... <laughs> <laughs> Is that another film? Huge, Is that another? That's a whole That's for that's you whole, to do on your channel, man. Uh, I've that's, already done it. I've already done it. So, it's, so it's post, too, post mine on yours. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll tag you it's and definitely... Uh, grab that in got a little big gym down here yeah not too many people remember big gym that's early 70s right there yeah here he is down in the cabinet. this is all big gym a little bit smaller he's an eight inch right. figure um but that's a big eight inch figure though you yeah, know when you look yeah. at the eight inch figures now like yeah. that could put out it it still doesn't seem like they scale the same but yeah big gym of course we got our this is more my speed yeah. i was never into that 12 inch uh gi joe Like I said last time, guys, I was here. That I, you know, I had this, I had that, I had this, I had that. What about? You now we talk about old. What about new? What about our younger collectors? What are they? Are they even going back here at all? I just talked to a kid that was over here. He couldn't have been more than eighteen years old. He was going off about the uh, traditional stuff. He's really? Like, he's like, this is like a museum. This is stuff my dad played with. I wish <laughs> I had it. I was like, yeah, you know, so. We were actually seeing a lot more of the younger kids that uh, either they, they found the cartoon on YouTube and they're watching the old cartoons and right. then they get into it. Right. Uh, or their dads are giving them the hand-me-downs, you know, when they sure. were a kid and uh, uh, seeing it. But they're really into the, uh, you know, the six-inch stuff now. Right. That's the, that's the scale that everybody seems to be going with. I don't know if it's, you know, the newest thing. Or reminds them of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle scale. Sure. You know, kind of sure. Wow, man. And then... The old school stuff in there. That's most of the, everything in there is uh, three and three quarter. Of the old school. Right. 
The O-ring. That's the the breakable O-ring, break and that's kind of like what's been going on, you know, lately with Hasbro putting out the new uh, Storm Shadow and uh, Snake Eyes, the the O-ring figures. Big, uh, big scale vehicle, really big, six inch, uh, oh, wow. Six scale uh, little bird there. Man. There you go. So, you guys looking for a little bird? Make sure you have room in your house for it. Yeah. Hang that from the sale, man. <laughs> is this uh, just display or is it actually no, for, no, sale? It's for sale? for sale. We just wow. sold one uh, a couple weeks ago. We had two of them. Got the uh, propellers up there, too. This diorama right here, this little uh, display is just a kind of a side replica of the Wisconsin. We did a uh, diorama down there on, right. on the Wisconsin for Christmas. And, and that's did. right down here in Norfolk. Yeah, and it's yep. uh, number 64. So. That's right. And then also down here, made this little diorama there too with the Navy divers in it. Because, you know, Little Creek, that's where I work. And uh, <laughs> we had all the Navy divers there. So uh, had to do a dive platform and... Uh, Give some love to the sailors also, down there. We also yeah. did that and put that on the, uh, on the ship as well. So. And I see these G.I. Joe... Um, the masterpiece ones. Yeah, yeah those what, what? are reissues. Uh, okay, they took the they took the real mold from uh, 1964. Right, and they just reissued them. Because uh, I'll see that going through flea markets or like yeah. even like um, antique stores, and they're like jacking the prices oh, way yeah. up there. But no, this, I know they're this, valuable. But I mean, like this is probably 40, 50 bucks. Okay, there shouldn't be more than that. Really, it comes with the book. You know, the story on where GI Joe started. Right, but, uh, but the figure itself and the mold is from 1964. You know, and that's the outfit that it came with. But it's a re it's a reissue. Reissue. Okay. Well, good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, especially I think 2001. They came out with the Interesting. Yeah. So we got a local collector who went ahead and did a great deal with our guys over here at Toy Meister. And so this, to my knowledge, we're just doing an unveiling. Look at that. Those guys look very familiar, kind of like on my t-shirt. All right, guys, so yeah, um, new Star Wars, new toys coming into Toy Meister all the time. You guys gotta always just check them out, hit them up. Rick, I want to thank you for inviting us to your wonderful toy store. Glad to have you. Uh, to talk about it. Let us know what's going on. Uh, well, uh, we've been in business uh, nine years now. Uh -huh. We started downstairs in a 10 by 15 space. Uh, we've now got closer to 15,000 square feet. I'm going to ask you why. Why, why do this? <laughs> Most of this stuff did not exist when I was a kid. Um, I'd always been interested in anything sci-fi, and when my son came along in 85, you know, he started getting into it, we collected it together, and it became kind of a family thing to do. That's wonderful. What's your number one toy line? Definitely Star Wars. There we go. Yeah, 
any particular character in in line or any group of characters or any movie in, or storyline that you just really I mean, truly the, love the vintage stuff is always the the biggest hit although you know it's it, it all boils down to what you grew up with you know okay. i grew up the the tail end of the the new stuff uh or the old stuff through the 70s and uh but i'm starting to see a, a increasing amount of people looking for the the uh, right. new movie tie-in stuff from the right. 2000 that's all of a sudden become very popular again all right one more question what's that one star wars toy or collectible that we're trying to get into the store if there is one <laughs> biggest thing is i'd like to get another set of the, the 12 packs in okay complete set yeah have you had a lot of people come into the store looking for that yeah we do okay as well they should right i mean it, <laughs> i had a guy show up uh, a couple years back he had nine of the original 12 bucks. Uh, five of the nine had never been punched, and he walked in the door with them in a trash bag. He thought he was going to get a hundred dollars to to pay his bills and walked out with a few thousand dollars. He was a happy camper. Happy camper. Talking about happy campers, we have a store full of them. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you thank for your you. hospitality. And again, guys, Virginia Beach. When you come out, come check out Rick and Toy Meister. Thank Please you so do. much. All right. All right, you took a look at the Star Wars collection. Tell me, what's your impression of this? My impression is I just went back in time. It's not back to the future, but it feels like I was in a DeLorean going back to my 1978 childhood yeah star wars had a big effect on your life obviously it started back in the 70s now we're, we're, we're talking about 2022 you know and it's still going on strong why do you think that is i think it's that escape from i mean a lot of the things that we have in today's world and sometimes we just need to get back to you know being a kid again and watching star wars on tv or just walking to a great store in this great collection right here just makes you feel like a kid again obviously a bigger and older kid but it's just a great feeling to just see and be a part of yeah i noticed when we were going through the tour that you, you did you saw a lot of stuff that you said you had you, you wish you had as well too um stuff that you, you didn't collect before but when you see that that feeling what, what was that like <sighs> That feeling was of joy. And, you know, people say that word a lot, but it just brings you joy. It brings you happiness. It, it kind of gives you that goosebumps and it kind of brings you back all the senses that we have as human beings. It's like, I remember where I was when I got my first Chewbacca. I remember where I was when I got my Dengar. You know, I remember where I was when I got whatever figure that we just saw here in this awesome store. Yeah. It just brings you back. Now, we all know you're a toy hunter. You've, you've been all over kind of like the East Coast. That's what you do. You're a toy hunter. Um, again, when you come to Toy Meister, what is that feeling like again as a toy hunter? When you go into Toy Meister as a toy hunter, you think that you found the world's greatest treasure. You really do, because if you are looking for the vintage, like what we found earlier, or if you're looking for something newer, it's all right here. And as a toy hunter, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the new, we're looking for the different, we're looking for the what we want. And we found it all pretty much right here at Toy Meister.